Hello friends, in this video, I'm going to explain you how to create custom authorized attribute. Now, before watching this video, I would request you to watch previous videos in this playlist where I have explained how to use authorize attribute to authenticate and authorize the user. So let's start. Authorize attribute is used to authenticate and authorize the user that we know. The default authorize attribute behavior is enough for most of the cases. There are situations where you want to have control in your hand. So those situations would would be like uh, you want to implement your own authorized logic and you want to have control in your hand for authorizing the user. So in those cases, you can basically extend the authorized attribute to create your custom authorized attribute. It is easy to create your own custom authorized attribute. ASP.NET MVC gives you power to extend the authorized attribute. Now we will see how to extend the authorized attribute. In order to create custom authorized attribute, we have to inherit from authorized attribute class and override its two methods. So basically you will create your custom attribute class. You'll inherit from authorized attribute class and you will override two methods that is authorized core and handle unauthorized request. So we'll see what these two functions do and what we have to implement in these two functions in order to extend the authorized attribute. The authorized score method checks if the user is authenticated and is authorized to access the action method. The method returns a Boolean value. So basically the main logic of authentication and authorization is done in authorized core and the result being true or false is returned from this function. So when the result is true, the action method will be displayed or action method will be re rendered with a view. If the result is false, then the control goes to handle unauthorized request method, which is our second function. So this function is used to process the SCDP request, which fails authentication from authorized core method. Okay, so when the authentication or authorization fails from authorized core, this function is called and here you can basically process the SCDP request. You can basically redirect the user to a particular view if the user is authenticated, but not authorized and you can do different things. Now let, let's go to the solution and uh, this is my solution that is custom authorized roles. It is an ASP.NET MVC solution and uh, before starting the custom authorized attribute, I would like to do two things. Uh, first, I will basically uh, go through the entire application, the important aspects of this application. And uh, the second thing is basically when you authorize or authenticate the user, you need to have a setup in your database where you will store the user details, users, username, user password and the role the user have. Then only you can basically authenticate and authorize the user. But in that case, I have not created that setup in the database. But instead, I have mimicked that setup by creating a class and that class is user details DB. So this is a simple class. It has of method that is user details db method or you can say it's a constructor so when you call when you create the instance of this constructor you'll be able to access this property that is list users and it is of type user details and this user details is basically having properties like name email password and role and when you access this class you'll basically having three users. So basically the entire setup of having user and user details and roles, I have encapsulated that into this class. So this class is my DB setup. Okay. And along with that, I have a club class, a club entity and a player entity. So these entities I'll use to demonstrate you authorization and authentication. Then I have this user detail class, which basically mimics a particular user and its details. Then going to the controller, I have club controller for club entity. Home controller is basically added by default, which renders the index view. Player controller for player entity and security controller having methods to log on and log out the user to the application. Then the last important thing in my application is the service. So I have a security service which basically access that DB class and performs two behavior. First is validating the user and other is the getting the user by username. So we'll be seeing where these two functions are used in the application. Now if I go to the 
application UI. So the application looks like this. So this is the default controller action combination that is home controller and index method which gets rendered. I can click on this club link to go to club list page. So it will redirect me to the club list. If I click on player, I'll be redirected to the player list view. And if I click on this add player, I'll be redirected to the view which allows me to add a player. And all these views are basically placed in our view folder as we have that as convention in the MVC. Okay, so this is the entire setup I have. And uh, now let's go to our custom authorized attribute. Now before that, you must have noticed like I have gone through the entire application, navigated through entire application, but not even a single place I've been asked to log into this application. That is because I've not applied that authorized attribute at any of the controller. So all these controllers and action methods are anonymous. Basically, it allow the anonymous access to these resources. But that would not be the case once we create our custom authorized attribute. So let's go to our attribute. So I have created a class named my authorized attribute. This class inherits from authorized attribute original class. And in this custom class, I have a constructor. So this constructor basically accepts comma separated roles, which would be applicable to a particular action method or a particular controller when you decorate that controller and specify the roles. So whenever you decorate a controller and specify the roles, those roles will be tracked in this private property that is allowed roles, which is of type string array. This is the first method that is authorized core. So as we've discussed, we are going to authenticate and authorize the user in this function. So let's see what it does. So the first thing we do is basically access the user property of HTTP context. So when I hover on the user, it says when overridden in a derived class gets or sets security information for current HTTP request. So basically I can access security information of the user from this user object that is of type I principal. Okay, so I use this object to access uh, whether the user is authenticated or not. What is the name of this user? Then I've created the instance of our security service, which basically interacts with our database class. And then I have a local variable that is authorize, which I return from this function. And we are going to modify this authorize variable based on the logic. The first thing I do is check whether the user is authenticated or not. So if the user is authenticated, then I go and check if the user is authorized because first step is whether the user is authenticated or not. Then comes the authorization. So if user is not authenticated, then authorization is of no use basically. So if the user is not authenticated, then basically directly I'm returning the authorize, which would have false. If user is authenticated, then I go another level. Then I check if any roles are specified while decorating the action method or controller with the attribute. So if roles are greater than zero, then I go inside this if block and access the DB user. So here I'm using the service get user by username method, accessing the name from this I principal object and then fetching the user. Then I iterate over each role which is specified by decorating the action method or controller and check if DB user has any one of that. So if the user has any one of that role, then I'm setting the authorized to true and then the authorized true would be returned from authorized core. So that means user is authenticated and also authorized. Now, if the user comes and he's authenticated and there are roles specified, but the user doesn't have that role, then in that case, authorized would not be set to true Authorize would be always false. So in that case, false would be returned. Now comes a third scenario. The user is authenticated and there are no roles specified. So in that case, we are going to go to else and directly setting the authorize property to true. So that means there are no specific roles or authorization required for that resource. 
the only requirement is that user should be authenticated and then we are returning true so this is all about authorized score and the logic we have implemented so this authorization logic you could implement in your own way that depends on you how you want to implement the second method is handle an authorized request so this method basically checks if the user is authenticated so before that uh, the control would come to this function only if the authorized score returns false now authorized score return false in two cases if the user is not authenticated at all this is the first scenario the second scenario is if the user is authenticated but it is not authorized so in these two cases the control would come to this function so what we are doing here is we are checking if the user is authenticated that means its username password are valid in that case we are redirecting the user to unauthorized view so basically we are saying you are authenticated to the application but you are not allowed to access this resource because you don't have that role so i have a unauthorized view under my shared folder so it basically says you are not authorized to view this page so you basically you can show a generic message through a view and when the user is not authenticated plus not authorized then this unauthorized result is returned to the user so this by this way you you are extending two behaviors through two functions of authorized attribute rest of the authorization authentication mechanism is handled by authorized attribute itself now let's go and decorate some of the controllers with my authorized attribute so i'll go to club controller and decorate it with my authorized attribute similarly i'll go to each of the controller that is home controller okay and then player controller similarly security controller so security control we don't need because these are the pages where the user should have anonymous access from where the user can log in okay so no need to do anything here but under player controller i have one action method that is add player now i want to give the permission or you can say authority to add player only to users who are admin so i'll just specify admin role here okay and now i'll going to run the application so by default our application will render home index but but as i have decorated that controller with my authorized custom attribute i'll be redirected back to the logon page and that is done by a section in your config file so how application knows that your login page resides there so that is basically done using this uh, declaration that is authentication form authentication mode form so i'm using forms authentication and you specify login url which is directing to security controller and logon method which we have here so when you are not authenticated the application would be redirected to this logon method of security controller and that is handled through web config so let's go to the ui and as expected you are redirected to the logon page and now if i try to go to club controller and club list action method anonymously so it is not allowing the anonymous access it wants me to log on to the application now before logging to the application let me go through the users we have so i'll go to the r db class under models folder so i have three users user 1 user 2 user 3 user 1 has admin access user 2 and user 3 don't have admin access so first i'll be logging through user 2 so i enter user2 at the rate email.com and password for user2 and click on log on then i'll be log into the application i'll be redirected to home index now i can access club controller player controller because these don't require admin role admin role is required when i click on add player so as soon as i click on add player it redirects me to the unauthorized view so it says you are not authorized to view this page because 
admin role is required for this. So user one has admin role. So we'll log in by user one. Okay. And we'll see if user one is able to access that page. So I'll click on add player. Now user one has admin role. So I am able to access. I'm able to add a player from this application. So this is what authorization is and authentication is. Now let me add few uh, debuggers to show you how that works. So I'll go to my authorize attribute and add few debuggers here. So first we'll see the positive scenario. Okay, so I'll click on home link. So for this link, basically, I just need to have authenticated. Okay, so I am authenticated. All right. And there are no allowed rules. So I'll be returning authorized true, and I'll be able to access that. Now I click on player. The same thing happens as home. Now when I click on add player. Okay. So now you could see this allowed roles has a single role because we have specified admin there. So in this case, we check if the user is authenticated. Yes, it is. Whether it has allowed roles, it has. So we fetch the user and we basically check if the user has that role. And once the user has that role, we set the authorized to true and then the user will be allowed to access that method. So now let me log off from this application and add one more debugger to this logon function and I'll explain you one more interesting thing. Now I'm logging through user two. Now when I click on logon, I have been redirected to this logon function and in this logon function, we basically check if model state is valid. That means user have provided username and password. Then I validate the user against our DB class. Once I'm validated or registered to the user or once the service finds out like the user is registered to the application and so that's that means the user is valid then I'm setting the authorized cookie for the forms authentication so when when I set this authorization cookie the user dot identity dot is authenticated which we check to find out if the user is authenticated or not is set to two. So when this cookie is set, this is authenticated turns to two. So this this I wanted to tell you. So now if I check this is authenticated would be true. OK, now I'll go to player controller. And similarly, try to access this add player. OK, now. I am authenticated. There are allowed roles. OK, but I don't have that role. So now I go back, come out of this function. Authorize is still false. Then the false is returned from this function. So that is why I've been redirected to handle on authorize request. Here I am authenticated, but I don't have authorize, authorized role to access that action method. So this unauthorized view is returned. OK, so this is how you can basically uh, implement authorization and prevent certain areas, certain areas for only users having authorized roles. So this is how you can basically create your own custom authorized attribute and extend the behavior of authorized attribute according to your needs. So this is all about custom authorized attribute and I hope you like this video. Thank you friends.